from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering InterConnect 2017. Brought to you by IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here in live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE's coverage of IBM InterConnect 2017. Three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Day two here, I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Harry Green, General Manager of Watson IoT, a CUBE alumni. Great to see you again. Thanks for coming on theCUBE this year again. Appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. I hope we're going to talk about Internet of Things, uh, what's in customer engagement, and education. Those are the things that uh, yeah. uh, we hope to talk about. Uh, congratulations, you guys have an IOT uh, center now in, in Munich, you guys had the big launch there. But the real thing that's uh, happening in, all the, in context to get zoom out on this is that we're seeing the trend of cloud and big data worlds being kind of accelerated together and IOT seems to be the, the, the center point of the action because it's industrial, it's business, it's people, it's cars, it's the world now. So the, the data piece of it is really accelerating. Now combine that with machine learning and the glam of AI, the, 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 the sizzle of artificial intelligence and cognitive, really kind of puts that at the center of the conversation. Yeah. This is transformative. Oh, totally, and I, I mean, you guys were at the genius of things, so you know that there were, you know, 600 Cs, uh, uh, you know, CEOs, chief innovation officers, chief digital officers, uh, from 400 different companies, uh, counting for about <clears throat> two trillion of, of revenues, and you're exactly right. It's across every major industry, uh, every major sector, and I think there are kind of three critical elements. The first is that, you know, with the whole proliferation of sensors and, you know, the cost points, et cetera, the amount of data and information that is being created is absolutely, you know, suited for, for Watson. And so all of those clients there, as you know, uh, are working with us and we share 22 major outcomes. Things faster, cheaper, better, uh, 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 that clients are actually experiencing. And so, you know, Watson is the differentiator uh, and from an IoT perspective, I think the other piece is for a very long time, IBM has proven that we respect and keep people's data perfectly safe. We don't use it, we don't open it, we don't go into it, we're not taking it for a future world uh, knowledge graph. We consider yeah. clients' data to be their DNA. And so people know that when you're doing IoT with IBM, that deep level of security is imbued within our capability. And then thirdly, whose data is it? Which is a huge thing in Europe and we're able with our data centers to demonstrate if you want to keep that data within lower Bavaria, that's what we'll do. And those three elements I think are fundamental. Cognitive, uh, uh, the protection of the data, and whose data is This who owns the data is really important. It's a big differentiator because the data informs the model. Um, they're almost intertwined. So who owns the model? The client owns the model, is that correct? Yeah, but I think um, this, uh, it, people have overcomplicated this, those who perhaps do not have such a simple and clear uh, answer to it, who don't have written into their terms and conditions that actually it's their data and they can hang on to it for as long as they like. We have always, to our clients, said, it's your data. It's absolutely your data. And if we create something together with your data, it's still your data. And so people only start to confuse this when they have primary, secondary, and tertiary levels of confusion uh, uh, to support their particular cause. And there is no confusion with our clients. When you talk to the chief digital officers of, of Schaeffler, uh, uh, of ISS, of SNCF, who were up on stage with us yesterday, you know, people who are demonstrating amazing outcomes that they didn't have before with IoT, they will say to you, there are three reasons why we went with IBM. The first, the platform. It is the best IoT platform. You know, from an IDC, from a Gartner perspective, that's what the uh, Forrester, what the guys say. Secondly, our applications uh, are, are very robust and help people get started on this IBM, uh, on this IoT journey. And thirdly, that the digital transformation uh, that 
is happening alongside this, back to your convergence point, we're also able to assist with, with our GBS IoT practice. And you're accelerating that too, the one, uh, Ginny Rometty on stage talking about how the Watson's learning faster by industry, but it's not a siloed thing, it's actually accelerating yeah. the transformation. Well, you component. put your finger on that precisely, because the amazing thing about the Internet of Things is it's, it's not just consumer, it's not just one industry, we're interfacing 34 different industries were represented at the genius of things, but it's also affecting lives. Yesterday you may have seen ISS and their amazing building that they've created, Kone, which now, you know, as you arrive at Terminal 5, wherever it is, a huge yeah. rush and suddenly the elevators don't work. Remotely, these elevators have been fixed and the journey is absolutely amazing. So it kind of is... That social good angle is important. There's a cognitive for social good trend going on right now, culturally. Mm -hmm. and that's really important. I want to ask and you... I, but I do think on the, you know, so... I mean, Ginny announced in, in Davos our cognitive principles. There's no client working with us that doesn't know yeah. they're working from a cognitive perspective. Yeah. We go to great levels to explain what we are doing, to yeah. whom it belongs, and that charter yeah. is not something we just came up with. That's IBM for 105 years. It's why I chose yeah. to come here around the Internet of Things. It's super inspirational for me personally, and I want to ask you about a topic that's passionate for us as an organization. We've had the largest uh, library of women in tech Going back to 2010, we've been interviewing some of the great leaders in, in the tech industry. This is really now going really amazing. You heard Mark Benioff on stage talking about all the goodness going on around equality and pay, everything else going on. But there's more women now instrumental in all the computer science and the business side. How are you continuing that? We talked about this a little bit last year with the mentoring. How do you attract the talent? How do you get that inspiration for the young women and girls out there from whether grade school, high school to college? What's, what's, what's well, the first plan? of all, I think you know IBM has on every level a proven history of diversity. 35 years before the Equal Pay Act, we were equal paying. We have an incredibly diverse cultural environment where regardless of your age, your sex, your color, your creed, your sexuality, or your physical ability, if you're good, you'll get on. So IBM lives and breathes that in every sense. Now, I think the challenge is, in North America particularly, in the 80s, 30% of young women were going into the STEM subjects, and now it's just dropped below 18%. And so I think it's absolutely critical that investors in companies are thinking about this equality and measuring uh, the power of diversity and innovation, that leaders inside of yeah. businesses do more than just pontificate on stage, but live and breathe it, as Ginny does. Yeah. And then also, that all of us in our decision making, particularly I did um, for International Women's Week uh, last week, um, a, a, a whole WebEx around inclusion and how, um, how we include, how we exclude. And I shared a particular story of a couple of weeks ago. Someone said to me, you're just such a left field candidate, Harriet. <laughs> and, and you know, maybe that's a compliment. He, he happens to be a very nice guy, and uh, maybe he's right. But you know, we want people to feel yeah. inclusive. One of the most amazing things that IBM has done for some time, which is almost unique, up there with Watson, is and we do this to attract millennials, uh, particularly. But anyone can participate. The the it's a program where we take people to go in a totally immersive, six or seven weeks, it may be um, uh, human trafficking in Thailand, it may be helping to train and educate in sub-Saharan Africa, and they work with local bodies, local institutions, really helps build this collaborative capability. And then all of the work that we're doing with P-TECH around upskilling and ensuring uh, uh, that the STEM subjects from a very wide range of, of young people uh, are really embraced. Harriet, we, you're getting requested because you've got to move so around the event so many places and your time's very scarce and you're, you have to move to the next event. Thank you for taking the time to share that with us and also the awesomeness around IoT and Watson. Appreciate it and good to see you. You look great. Thank this you. is IBM Interconnect, Harriet Green, the leader of Watson IoT, customer engagement and support. I'm John Furrier with Dave Lamp. We'll be right back with more after this short break.